cultured or lab-grown meat was largely confined to labs until now. Singapore became the first country in the world to allow the sale of cultured meat. It gave Eat Just the green light to sell its lab-grown chicken nuggets. The San Francisco company has now teamed up with the restaurant 1880. It's put lab-grown chicken on its menu, making it the world's first restaurant to serve up cultured meat. Bloomberg's Mark Cudmore went to the restaurant to test it out. It's really good. I mean, look, it's really good. It's really tasty. I'm about to be one of the world's first commercial customers of lab-grown chicken. Yes, I'm about to eat several pieces of chicken that have never seen a farm, they've never even seen a factory. In fact, it's never been a real chicken. It's meat that's been developed in a laboratory. It's not even plant-based meat. It's been grown in vitro from animal cells. Very exciting. Let's see what it tastes like. There's only permission for it to be in chicken nugget size, bite size. We're not getting thighs of meat here. We're not getting breasts of meat. We're getting chicken nuggets, chicken nugget dishes. So the chefs are limited by that scale. Maple waffle and a crispy cultured chicken bite. What do you reckon? Can you see that? Looks kind of chickeny. Looks like a well-cooked chicken, I would say. Looks pretty crispy outside. It's pretty tasty. I can't claim I'm tasting chicken yet, though. I might just be tasting the really nice exterior. It doesn't look exactly like chicken. It looks a little bit more rubbery, if I'm honest, but it tastes damn good. You know what? What I'm really thinking is, just, I'm eating chicken. I like chicken. And do you think that looks like, exactly like chicken? I'm not so sure. Um, let's give it a go. As much as I'm being picky about the fact that it doesn't seem to look exactly like I think the inside of a chicken nugget should look, the texture is good. It breaks apart nicely, it's quite like, it is very tender, it's very tender. It's probably less juicy than the ideal chicken, but when did you last have a chicken nugget that was juicy? You didn't, they're all dry, they're all horrible. Chicken nuggets are all processed bits of chicken meat. So really, if you want good chicken, you wouldn't have a good chicken nugget in the first place. I think that I could quickly prefer this to normal chicken, even if I think there's a slight difference, because this is a very nice texture, and presumably they can make it consistently good because it's lab-grown. If you'd served it to me in a restaurant and never mentioned anything about it being lab-grown, I never ever would have noticed. So of course it's, it's as close as you need it to be in reality. But if this is uh, healthier, better for the environment, um, just as tasty, do I care that it looks slightly different? And bear in mind, I'm comparing it to antibiotic-fed chicken in the first place that's heavily processed. Who am I to say that that's better? So that's the place setting of one happy customer. Two empty plates. Nice one. Joining us now is Josh Tetrick. He's a co-founder and CEO of Eat Just. Now, Josh, this meat is made from animal cells, but doesn't involve slaughtering any animals. How does that actually work? We identify a cell from a chicken, nutrients to feed those cells. So instead of eating soy and corn, we identify nutrients for the cells. And then we culture, scale it up um, in a, uh, a large steel vessel. And the process is somewhat like uh, culturing beer. Um, at the end of the, the process, you have chicken meat or beef meat. In our case, it is chicken meat. Um, the simplest way to think about it is it allows all of us to consume meat, the good part, the nutritional composition, uh, the taste, um, and do away with the bad part, uh, which is the killing, the environmental deforestation, the acceleration of zoonotic disease, um, and we can still have a fried chicken. Now, what are the advantages of cultured meat versus regular meat? The advantages of cultured meat over conventional meat include safety. So if you look at pathogens like E. coli, salmonella, this way of making meat is just uh, significantly cleaner, more sanitary. This way of making meat radically decreases the probability of zoonotic uh, diseases through our food system. 
If you look at climate change, this way of making meat is 90 percent uh, more carbon efficient uh, than the, the typical approach. And if you look at something that maybe is even deeper than that, the morality of how we want to eat food, we don't need to eat food that causes harm. And with this way, you don't have to cause harm. Does it taste the same? And the most common reaction is this tastes like chicken. It has a flavor profile, it has a texture of chicken. And it's not surprising that it tastes like chicken because it literally is chicken. But without the production meth methods that don't necessarily reflect the kind of world that we want to build. And how does it compare to regular chicken in terms of cost? We're pricing it at right about premium chicken. So 1880, the place that we're fortunate to launch with, uh, a, a chicken dish is somewhere between 23 and $30, and we're right, right in that range. Mm -hmm. In terms of costs, um, we are, because of the proprietary nature of how we're producing it, we're not sharing costs. I, I can tell you we're not making money on it right now. But as we continue to scale up, as um, economies of scale begin to, to take hold, we see a pathway in the next five or so years to get below the cost of chicken. And that's really where things begin changing, right? If you can get below the cost of conventional meat, if it tastes as good or better, um, then it's difficult to imagine why a restaurant would want to have regular chicken and this chicken. They would just want this chicken because it's substantively better in any way. Can you talk us through about your personal journey, how it is that you came to create cultured meats? I'm probably the biggest uh, chicken eater back in the day that I know. And then I, um, I met a guy named Josh Balk, who's turned out to be my best friend. And he really opened up my eyes to how the food we eat either reflects or doesn't the kind of person that we want to be and the kind of plant that we want to live in. Uh, and I started moving towards more plant-based, vegetarian first uh, and then vegan. And I have a particularly interesting eating style now, so I'm almost entirely plant-based, except when I eat our chicken. Is there anything we haven't talked about already that you want people to know about cultured meats? Young people see pretty clearly. They realize that we don't have to bring harm onto our plate, right? We can eat in a way that reflects who we are. The youngest person I know, my niece, June, who's two years old, by the time she enters high school, I want her to live in a world where the vast majority of meat, beef, chicken, all of it doesn't require killing a single animal doesn't require tearing down a single forest, doesn't require a single drop of antibiotics. Um, and we want to run towards that world.